welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to my channel, uh, Mo Jobs, and um, welcome to a very new interview season, which is called Launch of Instagram. This is my uh, very first interview, and the very first interview being in English as well. All of the other videos on my channel are actually recorded in German, so this is pretty new for me and probably pretty new for my audience as well. So for this series, I picked a very special guest today. And you can already see him and you saw it in the thumbnail I've got for my very first interview, Rudit Lonko from Marietta, Pennsylvania, USA, um, joining me uh, today. And I'm very, very glad I got you for this interview because we've both been chatting for quite a while. I think I've followed your channel since March, April, something like that, 21. And I saw how your channel just skyrocketed within the last year. But we're going to come to these questions um, within this interview. Um, I'd like to welcome you, Vince, and um, thank you so much for this interview. And I like the swag that you're wearing. You can probably show this later on. That's the Ramba Zamba swag. Um, yeah, welcome to this interview. And let's have a dive into that. Um, Vince. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, <laughs> thank you too. Yeah, all the way from the US of A. Yeah, going international now, right? Yeah, how about that? <laughs> and it's actually your second interview. So you did an interview as well with an American-based um, yeah. long-care YouTuber who's uh, at, in Germany at the moment. But um, let's start. First up, let the audience know who is Rudy Lonko. Well, who's Vince? Who's Vince Grove? <laughs> so I'm Vince. I'm Rudy Lonko. There we go. <laughs> there we go. No, so I'm, uh, I... Uh, started up in uh in february uh, i'd just been obsessed with my lawn and decided to uh stop burdening other people with my lawn pictures and put them on instagram where other people also post lawn pictures um you know that all sparked through a simple lawn solutions uh, which is a liquid fertilizing company here in the u.s um, they had a lawn contest in, i guess it would be two years ago and uh I entered it, was in the top five, and then met all these awesome people that also like posting lawn pics. So I talked to my wife, thought it over for the winter. And I was like, you know what? In February, we're launching something. And I've always liked the name Rooted Lawn Co. Uh, there's a couple different meanings behind it. But um, yeah, so I was like, let's, let's start this. Let's just start taking videos. Let's start a YouTube channel. Let's hit Instagram. And it's been awesome. It's been a really cool ride. The, the I think my favorite part so far is just meeting everybody in the lawn community like yourself. Like I would have never met you or um, folks down in Australia and stuff. So it's, it's been really cool to just to interact and see other people. And yeah. I'm pretty impressed how big this lawn care community actually is and internationally, not just in the US. I think the US, uh, the lawn care community is huge. It's massive. Like every day I go into Instagram, I see more and more people um, write lawn care. But um, having this internationally, um, that is pretty surprising. Well, it was at least pretty surprising for me. Um, that story sounds pretty cool. As you said, you started in uh, February last year. Did you actually start just with Instagram, Instagram or did you start with Instagram and YouTube both at the same time? The YouTube came a couple, probably a month or two after Uh, the Instagram started. So I had a, a personal Instagram account where I would, you know, post more like uh, my fishing pictures, family and stuff, an occasional lawn picture here and there. Um, and, uh, but once I launched Rudy Longco, I, was, I started about 500 followers. Um, so then right now, I think I'm about a little over 10,000. So that's like pretty much all growth from the lawn care community and people that just love lawn care, which is just wild. Um, but the YouTube channel that started a couple of months afterwards, and I recently just did a TikTok too, which I haven't put too much time into that. There's just too many things going on right now. So uh, YouTube did put out a couple of videos. I think I have like 10 videos up now. Um, that's been a work in progress. There's some pretty exciting things going to happen, hopefully in the channel this, this coming year. Yeah. Cool. Sounds pretty good. Um, what can actually um, people expect if they are going to follow you on Instagram They're going to type in Rooted Longco. What kind of content do, they, do you deliver there? Well, first off, I hope you laugh at some of the content because I'm throwing weed whackers around me and like, like a, a metal guitar guitarist. Um, 
but I'm also posting pictures of my lawn, some damage areas that I have. Um, in the US, we had a lot of struggles with armyworms. So you can kind of see different pictures of how my lawn was affected, what I was doing to my lawn. Um, so you'll learn some educational stuff. You'll see different products. Um, you'll see a funny reel, hopefully. Uh, you'll see satisfying reels. Who doesn't like a good mow job? Um, so, so yeah. All right. Who doesn't like a good mow job? Well, that's um, <laughs> actually kind of, uh, there we go. The, see how uh, I did that. my name yeah. as well. Um, but yeah, um, it sounds pretty cool. And um, well, I do know your content as well. And um, well, I like the, and I can see it in the background um, there already. Um, you going mad with these stripes, and I think um, that's uh, the picture that actually actually skyrocketed um, your account as well. I was asking you that question before because I started following, as I mentioned, like in March or um, April last year, and your subscriber numbers were about like a thousand or something like that. And over the year, every time I saw your account, I was like, "Whoa, this man is going to the moon!" Right? Um, so yeah, as I said, it skyrocketed. Which picture or which post actually skyrocketed your account up to the 10,000 10, or 8,000, something like that? Yeah, I can't. So I look back this uh, during like New Year's, look back at seeing like which one some of my top posts and everything were. Um, the picture behind me was one of my top posts. Um, that was actually one of the pictures I submitted for uh, the Simple Lawn Solutions right. Lawn Contest Lawn of the Year and actually won that, that contest this year. So for, for pictures, that was definitely one of the, the top ones that got thrown around the most. Um, but my reels, those I think are what really helped skyrocket my, my account. Um, there's one where I'm knowing, actually no, the first one that really took off was something that I was just like, why are people watching this? And it was just me <laughs> leveling dirt. Just, just had, a, it's had a cool song. I'm leveling dirt with my DIY leveling rake and people right. are like, eating it up and i'm like you know hundred thousand views what two hundred thousand views three hundred thousand views i was like this is insane and then i did another one with a thatcher and the same thing people just ate it up it's like okay there could be something here with with reels and just i guess mowing dirt or going over dirt so, <laughs> so, so then i took it i finally got my lawn back and i started making some different um reels my lawn and just doing some striping videos and stuff and people really like that too. So there's a couple views. There's a couple that are just dirt related that have a lot of views that really kickstarted it. But then there's uh, my, my most popular one was a fall cleanup video uh, with my Toro Time Master. And I uh, just laid some stripes down, cleaned the leaves and it got over 2.4 million views. Wow. Yeah. That's actually insane. I just did I, one reel and I think I've got 80 views or something like that. Like I'm really into that real thing. And um, <laughs> like I actually started with, with YouTube, right? And not with Instagram. Instagram just came to the side. Uh, but um, wow, that really is insane. Over 2 million views. Um, <clears throat> the question that I just um, asked myself, how many contestants were in that contest with Simple Lawn Solutions where you actually won that thing? Oh, I... I can't give you an, an honest exact number, but I remember scrolling through like six or seven pages of different entries. So I want to say there's probably like anywhere 50 to 75, maybe wow. 300. I'm not sure exactly how many there were in there, wow. um, but, but it was a lot of lawns and they were just fire. I mean, some of these stripes, there was, there was real mowing uh, stripes, which always, always are on point. And then there's uh um, just these people with just huge properties with big, big zero turns that are just laying insane stripes all the way up like a hill or so I, I definitely didn't think that I would take it. But um, yeah, people, people just liked like this picture. Eh? So well, it is actually amazing. And you send me a couple of pictures, how you transformed uh, your house while well, you garden. <clears throat> And then actually put some nice lawn into that and like the, the progress of the lawn getting better every year as well. Um, so going to have these pictures we can blend into here. Um, well, I think you bought your house a couple of years ago and then you started renovating it um, inside, outside before you went uh, to the lawn. And um, when was that? Like when, when did you actually buy this property and started off with the very new lawn there or renovated the lawn? I think we're coming up on 
five years since I bought this house. Uh, and it wasn't until the fall. Um, so I bought it around February. So it wasn't until the fall then I uh, actually killed off the entire lawn front and back, brought in topsoil, uh, and then regraded everything, leveled it out, and then planted the seed that you see back here. All right. Uh, yeah. And then it was, I feel like for the next three years, I lost half of my lawn um, from fungus, from stress, from some type of disease or, or um, insect. Um, so it was just a constant battle. But um, this past year, despite army worms, was probably the best year the lawn has looked um, so far. So does this actually give you motivation? Like when you killed off your lawn, you bought the property, you kill off the lawn, um, reseed it or renovate it, reseed it, and then um, you had a couple of years where you had to struggle with diseases. Um, does this actually motivate you to um, get yourself read into um, lawn care, how to do lawn care properly um, before you actually started um, with the Instagram channel and the YouTube channel now? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I was, so I was doing lawn care for many years. Um, even back in high school, I was doing lawn care and helping out and I had a lawn uh, landscaping company. Oh, really? Uh, I did, yeah. Through, through college, just something small just to help pay for college tuition. Get some bucks and, on the side. Yep. So um, always had, you know, a pretty good baseline knowledge of, of lawn care and how to take care of lawn, but it wasn't until this renovation and in the trials that I kept being faced with that I started taking in tons of knowledge and learning, okay, if this happens, do this, if this happens, do this, or hey, do this to prevent this right. from happening. So yeah. Pretty cool. That's a good story, man. Like, uh, I think when, when I just think about a couple of minutes ago, um, you've mentioned that your reels um, actually had such a quite or, or such a uh, huge number of views where you're actually in the dirt. And I think like everyone um, can identify himself with that, because if you go out in the lawn, if you have to do a renovation like you dealing with a lot of dirt, you're dealing with hard work as well. And I think like that. That's like what we all do. And it's not just like pictures of the very finest and best cut trims lawns out there. Um, so it's all about that, you know, like having a good lawn is actually hard labor. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it's um, this. So when was it? I guess it would be actually what's today's date? Last year, the same day, my front lawn right now would be getting ripped up with an excavator to repair my sewer line. So, um, which prompted like the whole season this past year of my front lawn being in dirt, and new seed and dirt, and new seed. And so, you know, you think you have a good lawn then something happens and it takes you right back down to dirt. But I, I think it's cool when you get to go down to dirt because it teaches you so much more about just prepping your lawn and, and prepping to get ready to, to uh, seed your lawn and just taking it from seed to grass uh, it just teaches you so much um, and it looks easy on youtube it looks like oh look this guy does, does, lawn, does. He does a quick deep thatch he, he levels it out and he plants seed and it grows but there is hours and hours and hours of time um, my one youtube video for my front lawn renovation um, if you haven't watched it, take a look at it because at the end, you can just see the sheer exhaustion I have on my face. Like the night, the night I seated it, I seated it in the dark and then, um, cause rain was coming in and I woke up at like 4.30 the next morning or five in the next morning and was out there with the headlamp, getting everything leveled out again one more time, um, and how to put down peat moss. And I was done putting peat moss down by like seven o'clock in the morning and I was just I was whooped just completely whooped um but now you see the fruits out there exactly and I'm real mowing it and it just gives you a greater appreciation for it so, so um yeah have you done a, a dirt renovation yet or have any plans for from from bare ground or like in my case <laughs> yeah well we do have a new garden uh, we bought this house um in September 2020 And uh, so we had to do all the um, inside renovations and um, 
restorations, renovations around the house as well. Now we're getting into the garden and I've just recently updated um, or gave an update on my YouTube channel and there's so much things to do. We've got about 1,300 square meters. I know that's the metric system now, but um, uh, I don't know how many square feet this is, but um, it's a huge area and we've got a whole lot to do there. And um, it is really hard labor to get dirt soil from A to B and, you know, put everything into the wheelbarrow uh, with a shovel. I mean, I can use like um, a little digger here, but that's just going to ruin everything on the ground because, you know, that's what diggers do. <laughs> they they not just dig with the shovels, they dig with their, um, what are they going on? Like, um, yeah. the, um, they're, they're not going on, on, on wheels, you know? And um, it's on these, what is it, chains? I'm not Tracks. sure. Say again? Tracks. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So uh, they're going to destroy everything. So yeah, yeah it's really hard labor. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of things to do. But I've got some other lawns uh, to take care of from my stepdad who lives around the corner. So um, oh, cool. <laughs> I do um, have some um, yeah input coming um, uh, this year for sure, lawn related and having some more videos as well. But um, enough from my side. Let's come back to you and uh, the questions to you, Vince. Um, if I see the lawn in your background, what is that? Is that cold season? Is it warm season? Which type of grass are you preferring as well? Are you going with KBG, PRG, or are you one of the Fasci uh, guys there? Yeah, so the behind me, that is um, that was just a big box store blend of Kentucky bluegrass and perennial ryegrass. Right. Um, so that now, like a 50 50 mix or is it like more perennial well, rye you know I, I really don't know what the analysis was on on the uh on the bag for that one it was kind of just a random this looks good the blue tag let's let's put it down so uh if i if i could do it again i would do i would have looked at my seed a little bit more but i mean the the lawn looks great any any average person would be like, that's a good looking lawn. That's a nice seed, but it did have a lot of weed seed and stuff in it. So um, this this past fall, I overseeded with some Mountain Dew seeds, um, 365 SS. It's a straight Kentucky bluegrass. Okay. So I'm slowly the one hundred percent Kentucky bluegrass seeds in there. Yeah. Yep. So I'm slowly converting. Going to try and convert my lawn to like a pretty much one hundred percent Kentucky bluegrass lawn. Okay. Yeah. So, because like in Germany, um, we use Kentucky bluegrass as well, and we use a lot of um, perennial ryegrass, or we do use, but they're pretty common mixtures between all the three grass types in there. So we've got KBG, PRG, and fescue in there. And that's like, I think that's the most common uh, mixture out there. And um, like what I used to um, throw down at my stepfather's house, that was, um, a um, perennial ryegrass like 90 percent and then just like a 10 percent of kbg in there um, with the thought like you're going to get very fast growth with the perennial ryegrass because it's germinating very fast like within four to five days you've got germination right and it's going to cover all the seeds or it's going to protect all the seeds from the um, uh, um, kentucky bluegrass which is actually germinating after three, sometimes to four weeks, right? And so, well, the goal with these mixtures is like that the uh, KBG will creep in over the years slowly, you know, like not right from the beginning. And so you don't have a lot of wash aways and things like that. So they are pretty common, these mixtures with like 90% uh, perennial rye and then like uh, just a small 10% of KBG in there. Yeah. So actually the opposite, um, and to answer, I think I missed this. Uh, it is cool season. Uh, it's cool season turf. Yeah. Um, so the front I did, uh, it's Mountain View seeds, but it was the 365 SS straight Kentucky bluegrass with 10% perennial ryegrass. Okay. And this perennial ryegrass actually has a lateral spread feature. So it, it has a spreading feature, uh, which is, which is pretty cool. So I'll be curious to see, you know, in the, in the fall, I'm going to do straight overseed of Kentucky bluegrass, but um, like you said, it, it's nice to add some perennial ryegrass just to get some germination to kind of help um, protect the other seed as it's germinating. The, the bluegrass 
with this particular bluegrass, um, some people have been seeing like four to five days of the bluegrass germinating. Really? I think, I think it's the bolt. Uh, I might be wrong on that, but the bolt cultivar from them, uh, it's been known to germinate super quick. Uh, like that is, that's pretty surprising. Like I think like, well, they, they're getting, um, they get it treated as well, the seeds, right? With a germination booster or something like that. Well, this is what we see over here as well. But that's like super fast. Yeah, and really um, fast. I think like I've, I've never like, well, I've never heard of um, anyone in Germany or anywhere around Europe using like pure uh, Kentucky bluegrass seeds. Like this is I don't even know if you can buy them over here. Probably you can, yeah. but no one's going to throw 100 percent of them down. Right. So it's just going to take a little thing of that. And I think in the US, I see this more and more like as well on youtube not just on instagram youtube as well like lawns with a monoculture just of kentucky bluegrass but um are you not scared of having a monoculture and then getting um a lot of diseases which are pretty common for uh, the kentucky bluegrass no i mean <clears throat> i use preventatives uh for that uh, i know this cultivar in particular has pretty good um trials and resistance at least you know that's what it says um so i use you know i i mow properly i keep sharp blades i water properly uh, i do use preventative fungicides um so yeah i still will see probably some fungus at some point because we're in just a super hot humid climate um even being in pennsylvania in cool season um but uh, I'm not. I'm not too worried about it. You know, I, I know how to take care of it. And if for some reason I lose part of the lawn, well, I've lost part of the lawn in the past like three or four years. So <laughs> just have to plant more seed. Yeah. I think everyone uh, within the local community had that before. That like you're starting with lawn and everything's going to get damaged. Everything's going downhill, and you're going to throw it down again and see if it's coming and you learn your lessons, right? And over the years, you're just going to gain more and more um, knowledge about that until the point, um, yeah, that you actually get into kind of like a perfection. But even then, I think you can mess up, you know, with things like just go on and vacations it, for a week or two. that'll come in and throw a wrench at you and you think you start feeling good about it. You're like, yeah, okay, my lawn's looking good. Boom, army worms are boom fungus and it's like okay back to square one and i think it doesn't help that it's such an immature lawn i mean a, a three-year-old kentucky bluegrass lawn uh, that's being reseeded with more kentucky bluegrass and not even a year old front lawn i mean when it's that immature you're gonna see a lot more disease pressure too so yeah i definitely have let me know is, is, is pennsylvania actually still in the transition zone it's not, but it's it's pretty close to it. Um, and it's which zone just, is it then? What's that? Which which zone is it? It's cool season. It's the cool season zone. Yeah. Okay, but you say it's it's getting very hot in Pennsylvania as well. So um, you would still go with cold season grass types, um, yeah. yeah. Other, rather than like trying out warm season grass. Yep, that's right. Yeah, now they make some cold tolerant, like Bermudas and stuff, but um, yeah, no, you don't want to be, like a lot of people have zoysia grass around here. Um, zoysia will grow pretty well, but come October, I guess it is, it turns brown. Just but still, zoysia will, will go into dormancy, right? Um, for yeah. like at least six months or something like that, and it's going to turn brown. It's not going to look any good. Um, well, on the other side, I think if we if we look into the environmental and um, if we think about sustainability, I think that warm season grass is actually a very good um, alternative, you know, to, to cool season grasses because they actually don't need as much water as the cool season grasses do need in summer. So um, I think if, if we want to really go down that way into sustainability, um, it was actually a thought of mine as well. Am I going to give this a try or not? If I'm going to go a cool season, I was going to do, I've got like two zones, you know, like two um, lawn zones, just like you have the backyard and the front yard, something like that. And it's going to be like next to each other. And um, I was actually having that thought, but um, I don't know, man, do I want to look like, do I want to look 
on this brown lawn for like half a year oh. where it rather could be green you know and um, some might not going to go with that but um yeah yeah um <clears throat> do you like if you use cool season grass and um you've got a lot of experience gained over the years with lawn care do you actually follow a strict lawn care plan throughout the entire week or throughout the year do you have a plan um if so let us know about this i used to yeah um this past year i kind of went rogue and tried a bunch of different things uh tried different products uh, and stuff but i actually when i first did my lawn renovation um gci turf pete denny he has a lawn care program or guide um that you can pay for and i forget it's like 49 bucks or 39 bucks and it tells you step by step what products what to use and i followed that pretty pretty to, to a T, I did um, his liquid program. So I ran only liquids on my lawn. Um, and then I kind of did a hybrid program. Now I kind of, um, after researching many products and seeing other guys using different products and stuff, I've kind of formulated my own little plan and uh, do kind of more of a hybrid plan where I'll do some granular applications, but then I'll do some intermittent liquid applications as well. Um, but I do my soil test I see what my soil will need and um, I'll, I'll use, you know, like what, how much nitrogen you need per year. I'll follow the recommendations for that. So um, this year I'm going to try and formulate something a little bit more structured um, than last year. Um, I kind of, when I had a chance to get out into the lawn and I was due for an application, I, I put something down. Um, I just, I had a very limited amount of time last year with, with our girls being born and stuff. So um the structured plan was there i just didn't follow it <laughs> so, so, so this year hopefully i can follow my structured plan but yeah if it's like is, go, is it is it actually going crazy like on monday i have to do this application liquid application then um monday two weeks after i actually have to do some granular fertilizing and then i have to go mowing on monday wednesday friday and then saturday sunday is going to be off like you actually follow the plan that strictly or is it more like all right come on we can skip a day my yeah my first year i was like to the t like okay it's been 30 days since last app today has to be the day i gotta put my app down like i'd see like rain would be coming or something or it wouldn't rain for the next like week and be like but i gotta put my application down i need to get it down one needs more nitrogen but i found out this year it really doesn't uh, and you can have just a, you don't have to be so strict with yourself and get stressed about not being able to get an application down. I think pre-emergence a pretty big deal to, to want to get that down. Um, but as far as like missing a, a week or two be, for an, a nitrogen application or some type of, you know, microbio or something like that, or biostimulants or something, then, um, yeah, I don't think you need to beat yourself up over it. So... Yeah. I think as, if you look into liquid fertil, uh, fertilizers, you can go very mad. You can put liquid humus down, like you can go with algaes and like you can dose it very fine, you know, what to throw down and you can go into spoon feeding and things like that. Like that can go very, very crazy. So that's what I always tell my friends as well. Like lawn care can actually like be very easy, you know, like with, with just a little few steps you can get a green lawn even if i do see uh lawns and this is how i started as well with a robotic mower you know like i mean it has its downs as well um but it's going to keep you uh it's going to keep your grass uh, looking green it's going to be mowed all the time and just with this little input you're going to have actually or you can have a good looking lawn and as well, you can go very in depth with it, you know, like going mad on like which mower do I use? How many times do I have to sharpen the knives? Uh, how the, how many times I'm going to backlap this thing, you know, like um, measuring the soil temperature and then ex exactly calculating when you have to throw down the first very first um, the third application, things like that. So you can go very mad with that, and um, that's just going to get out this little notch of being a little bit more epic, you know, but um, as well, I think like lawn care is so interesting and because it is such a big world out there and um, you can go so in depth with it. I think that's, that's like so interesting. And this is the reason I actually jumped into this as well. So 
going crazy about that is in my uh, from my point of view is not a bad thing <laughs> but it's hey, that, with a mad scientist sometime <laughs> it is it actually is right um <clears throat> so if if you could but you, pick- gotta, but you gotta understand like at least like what i like to do is say like look i'm i can throw all this stuff down and i'll buy all this stuff and i'll use all this stuff but your average homeowner you don't necessarily need to follow this and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars so like a lot of my youtube channel i try and say like hey look this is the cheapest you know irrigation setup you can do this is the cheapest way to install an in-ground irrigation system i try and be cognizant of not everybody has the finances to be spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars to try and have a nice lawn so you know while i like to throw products down and uh, use different products and even if it's expensive then I, i like to just give a little caveat and be like hey look like but you don't need to do everything I'm doing to have a nice lawn. You know, there, there's, there's other ways to do it. So, yeah. Yeah. That's what I said. Like, even you, if you do have robotic mower, right? Like I didn't have any irrigation system. Like I just had this one little thing there. I just have to move around on the lawn and still the lawn was pretty nice because like watering, most people think, well, now I've got an irrigation system. Well, turn it up every day like that's the worst thing you can do you know like you need to get some new training on that you know like and actually give as less water as you can i mean it's good for the environment and it's going to get your roots shooting down as well so well even just a normal way on putting water down into your lawn um it's going to get you a nice looking one as well yeah so vince if you could pick any mower out there in the world all right many money doesn't matter at all which one would that be you know i was i thought about this question i was like well, I'd, I'd like this one i'd like this one but then because like there's different mowing styles you know that you could be a real mow you could um just rotary mow you know walk behind but i think my favorite mower and i don't know if they have an attachment for this or not but it would, it would probably be a ventrack have you heard of the Ventrax? No, I've never did before. So tell me about it. You got to take a look at them. So it's a lawn tractor, essentially. And um, they are notorious for just doing like uh, in, like super steep inclines um, and mu- muddy, boggy areas. And um, But the, the cool thing is the versatility of them. So they have, um, you can put your brush hog on it. You can put um, a trencher on it. You, I think they have a reel attachment to it. I'm not sure, um, but you can hook up a reel to be able to reel mow. Um, you can do anything with this tractor, which is incredible. So I think if I had to pick any, uh, it would be that with like all the attachments. Um, this is like so but, versatile that you can actually put everything onto it. Like they 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 sell additional things for it, and you've like you've got one machine you can do anything with that. Yeah. Yeah, you can get so rid of the can, snow then. <laughs> you can add like a loader to it. You can, I think it has a 90 inch deck that you can attach to it. I think that's true. But yeah, then, I mean, for any lawn renovations, you can hook up attachments for that. So it's it's literally anything you need to do that that tractor can do. It. Like like a 90 inch deck for the, um, for a, a rotary mower mm-hmm. unit. Yeah, yeah. So do you guys have Steiners over there? You ever hear of Steiner? No. Nah. Okay. Well, I didn't, but uh, maybe some of the viewers out there have, um, yeah. maybe some greenkeepers out there as well, um, probably had uh, heard about that, but I never heard about that. So um, I'm pretty familiar with all the common ones, you know, like the John Deere, the Toros, the Swartman, things like that, and um, or um, Atco as well. So these are actually the most most that you can see around here. Yeah. My, my other options were the, the Alet C34, I think it is or uh, just like a, a, like a Toro walk behind, 48 inch rotary walk behind. Those are my two other that I was like, ah, oh, I could really, I really want this one, but this one's really cool too, so yeah. What are you mowing with at the moment? I think you've got two mowers, right? You, like you get a rotary push mower with a roller at the back, and I think you've got a Toro Greensmaster. Am I wrong? And I have a John Deere, I have two John Deere uh, green, uh, Greens mowers as well, yeah. So I have a, a John Deere 220A. I have two of those that I just picked up. Um, and then I have a Toro Greens Master once in 
and then which needs some work to it. And then I have my Toro 30 inch um, rotary mower um, that has um, a big league lawn stripe kit on the back of it to help push down some stripes. So, yeah. That's pretty cool. What's your favorite? You know, I really like my Toro uh, Time Master. Um, and I, I ran it on the, on the front, the low cut lawn in the fall for cleanup. And when it's on a smooth lawn, it's, it's like, it just, it's just a Rolls Royce. It's just so smooth, but um, yeah, I, I gotta say my favorite so far still is my, my, uh, my Toro, Toro mower. Yeah. They I, I, I love real mowing, but they're old real mowers. So they're, they're, <laughs> they're not the, the most smooth ride, you know, they, they pretty much walk you. Um, so, yeah. I see the picture behind you and I can actually see these stripes like intensely. Um, which height of cut do you, you actually like to mow? Like if I look into the background, uh, that's a backyard, sorry. Um, which height of cut did you use there to get such striping results? That was probably two and three quarter to three inch. Um, that's now I have to calculate, man. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you'll have to put that in the chat below um, or, or, or a subtitle of what that measurement is. But, um, yeah, it, you know, it's this big. <laughs> I think an inch and a half would be like 30 millimeters, something like that. 30 okay. to 35 uh, millimeters, something like okay. that. So, so, so yeah, it, that, that was a little bit higher. Um, I like to cut at, um, I really like my front being low cut at one inch if i could cut the entire lawn at one inch I, I i would do that um but not being irrigated i have to keep it a little bit taller so two and two and a quarter is probably what i'll try and keep my back at this year so the backyard is going to be growing longer and the front yard is like the shortcut lawn and i've seen your reads man you've got all the man man's crossing um the front, yeah. <laughs> uh, the front yard and uh, now eventually uh got a little sign um put into the lawn keep off the grass we get it with you there we go see any man man crossing it still no actually uh they pulled into the driveway and, and walked up to the driveway. So I don't know if they saw it. I, I know the one guy, he follows me uh, on here. So it was kind of funny that, you know, I threw him in the video, but um, yeah, they haven't walked through it yet. So. <laughs> and if I see your, um, if I see your backyard here and uh, the pictures of your front yard, you actually struggle with power and your problems. Yeah, I do. Yeah. A lot. Or yeah. is it just moderate? The front, I don't have any in the front. Um, in the back, the POA is, it was really bad. So there's a picture of um, four different lawns for each different season, like a renovation, year one, year two, year three. And you can see in the one, there's a lot of POA lime patches. Yeah. Um, I, did, I put a pre-emergent app in the fall down and then uh, the next year is actually a little bit better. Um, but there's still some sections where POA is, a, is an issue. And I think it's mainly because there's a lot of water that sits there. Um, and the POA Triv, I have a bunch of spots of POA Triv as well, which uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to handle that this year yet, but I got it, it looks terrible. So I think it's pretty interesting that POA annua over the time is actually getting resistant to pre-emergence so it builds up a resistancy uh year by year and is getting more and more so um pre-emergence don't really um kill all of the poor annual seats uh, if you'd say like you did a fall application and it only got better a little bit well they're not killing up or like they're not going to stop 100 of the seats right from germinating because like some of the seeds are going to be in the soil and then they're coming out next year or the year after but i think like getting a resistancy against um these pre-emergence that is pretty incredible man and um i think like over the like looking into the future i think we just have to accept that we have to deal with a little bit of power um at least in our lawns right or they come out with something that finally takes care of power and that'd be wonderful and that person would be a multi-millionaire <laughs> <laughs> all right um tell us your plans for 2022 what have you got? 
Yeah, there's a, there's a couple things um, that I'm going to try and do. I'm going to really focus on trying to do some spoon feeding on the front lawn. It's not something I've really um, done before. So I'm going to focus on spoon feeding. Um, I'm going to, I've been looking into silica and the use of silica uh, in the front lawn and the, and the, you know, the benefits of using silica. So I'm going to probably apply some silica in the front lawn and see, you know, maybe do some test plots with one that was applied with some one that wasn't uh, to see if I see any differences uh, that's not just down on paper. Um, there's some little mini renovations um, for some promoter clients that I'll do um, and a lot of mowing. I'm going to do a lot of mowing designs. And it's going to, yeah. That sounds pretty interesting, man. And I think the um, when you just mentioned you're going to try silica, I think the very first time I heard about that being put down on the lawn was by Alan Hayne, the lawn cannot, or from Ryan Noir. I'm not sure, but I was really um, surprised that he actually can throw this down. Um, and I really have to read myself into that. And I really have to read myself into liquid fertilizing as well. For me at the moment, this is just like not really a black box, you know, but like something I really want to go into depth with it too. Um, so Vince, let me know, like what's your most valuable lawn care advice for our viewers out there? Yeah, most valuable. Um, you know, I, I kind of like we were joking about like, all these products and you, you know, on this day, I have to throw down this on this day. I have to throw down this. I think to take away the stress of it is to write out a plan and try and have a plan coming into the spring. Um, that will, it's more of a guideline just to kind of help you put your thoughts on the paper and see, you know, okay, you know, in 30 days, I'm going to do this app or 90 days, I'll do this app, which will just make it a little bit more enjoyable to not stress about it so much. Um, and just enjoy where your lawn's at right now, because as you've seen in some of the pictures that I that I sent you, um, it takes time to have a nice lawn. Um, you know, I know on Instagram it seems like, oh, this person did a renovation and it is mint. Well, if you zoom in a little bit closer and and you see some bare spots left and right and sat there, it, it's not perfect, um, and it takes years to get a perfect lawn if it ever is perfect. Um, but yeah, it just takes time. So just enjoy where your 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 lawn's at now. Um, get a good mower that you like to to mow with. Put some music in, and you know, just have fun in it. Because um, there will be struggles, and you'll get mad. But you know, try and find the joy in it. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Like, there's like people asking me as well, like if I upload a new video and then people asking me on, on Instagram, like, what do I have to do? I want to get this nice lawn. And I have to tell them, look, it's not like a little magic trick, you know, like you're not going to do a renovation and like, boom, you never have to mow again. You never have to water again. Like just when you throw down the seats and water once or twice, no, that's not going to be it. You know, like there's a lot of hard work into that. And I think that actually like having a plan, like I agree with that, um, will get you we get your ass out there as well, you know, like that's just like uh, I'm gonna sit on the couch having a beer, and yeah, I could mow the lawn, but I could as well forget about that for today as well. So, <laughs> um, you know, like having that plan and like keeping control of that plan, it doesn't have to be like rocket science, you know, but like just to get yourself like kind of a to-do list. And then I think like at the end of the year, you do have very good results and very good pictures as well from your lawn. And I think the most uh, valuable compliment is um, yeah, actually the views from your neighbors, the looks from your neighbors when they are yeah. like, shit, I want to have that too. <laughs> Vince, as we are on, um, or as the title of this show is actually called Lawns of Instagram, let me know, are you into the sticker swap thing? I am. Yeah, I do have uh, I do have some stickers uh, and I do some sticker swaps, although for some reason, my stickers just get lost in transit every time I've sent. I think maybe one or two have actually reached. Have you even got your sticker yet? I got your sticker, man. It came okay, like, good, good. It was like the it, it, I think it got you like a week or so later already. Yeah. So it was pretty fast. And I just learned it takes average on the average, like eight days from Germany to uh, get to the U.S. Yeah, so I do have stickers. Um, so if you want a sticker swap, hop on over to my Instagram or YouTube and let me know. Yeah. 
Exactly. Hit up Vince from Rooted Lawn Co. to uh, receive any stickers. And if you have stickers to go into that sticker swap, give this guy a like, follow his YouTube channel as well. This guy is actually throwing down some proper reels and pictures and has a very, very mint lawn. Other than that, he's a very fine guy. I like that. And I'm very, very proud of Vince that you have joined this interview today. Thank you so, so much. And we really have to keep in touch as well. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Yeah. Thanks. All right, we got it. That <laughs> was good. It was good. I think it was. I cannot see you. Recording in progress. Oh, no, it doesn't look good. All right. But, oh, no, I have to get my phone on silent. <laughs> I moved my phone, man. All right. Vince, man, let's do this.